Hello everybody, Andreas here. In this video, I really want to share my frustrations with the biggest three code flaws, in my opinion, flaws in the interface. And I really want to encourage everybody to also leave their comments in the comment section about the request for the interface and what they want to be improved because the new 3D code version will be rolled out soon enough. And I really want these little things to be fixed there or be planned to be fixed in the future. I don't want to be mean about 3D code. I use it every day and I think it's a great software, but every little second I spend clicking something, doing three clicks instead of one click means I lose time and essentially lose money. If you look at the plugins that are made by artists for artists like Box Cutter or like Jama Jorobayev is doing his plugins for Blender, everything there is super streamlined because artists know that this is their bloodline. They cannot click, they cannot do extra clicks at all it costs money so everything is super streamlined everything is on the keyboard and the hot keys you don't have to click through menus at all so let's start gizmo i hate gizmo inside 3d code i hate gizmo in every 3d application that has gizmos because it's really hard to aim every time i do this i have to really like i really want to bring this picture and like feel the pain because it's easy to lose selection when you misclick, um, really easy to do scale instead of movement, really easy to rotate instead of move. And it's all the time. It's just horrible. And it's really, really annoying. So Blender doesn't have any of those issues, right? So I'm pressing G and I'm moving this stuff around. I'm not pressing my left mouse. I'm just in this moving uh, mode, right? So I'm moving this around. I'm pressing the middle mouse and it's moving on this axis. I'm pressing the middle mouse, moving on this axis. And I also can press X, Y, Z, so it will move in different axes. So this is amazing. And then if I press R, it will rotate. Again, I'm not trying to hit that gizmo little thingy because I wasted so much time trying to do that and undoing this stuff. So this is a big, big problem, especially in the heavy scene where you, by misclicking somewhere, you'll no, we have to undo and it will take a couple of seconds. If uh, we can, if we could bring this uh, blender mode and maybe just make it optional, that would have been the amazing. For people who want to suffer, uh, we can keep the gizmo for them. Some of you might not know, but actually there is snapping inside 3D really code, but it's not called snapping because why would it call snapping by snapping? We call it a fit. And it is a pretty annoying thing. You have to pick a point, then pick an end, then hit Fit is important. So I've just done like five operations here to do this. And it's kind of my tiny little artist brain is over ex overloaded and just exploded just doing this little action uh, in this sequence because I'd rather just use this tiny little gizmo and move this around and bring it somewhere. Hopefully it will match because that will actually be way easier and straightforward than trying to use the fit snapping tool. Maya has the best, I think the best snapping tool in the industry right i click v and i just jump over to the another surface that's it just one click done i don't need to go through a sequence of some special command with some extra extra options i don't need all that extra tools and modifications that i need to put in i just want to do really quick really easy to use dumb dumb and easy tool that will save me a lot of time moving stuff around the biggest complaint is actually the scene management inside it's really good because you can see here i have an assembly here it's not even a full assembly of the vehicle but now i have a million layers and if say i click uh, somewhere over there on that uh, seat belt and i'll try to get back to the top i'll do a lot of scrolling forever we'll just scroll 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 up and down and this happens all the time uh, it's really easy to get lost in this list it's really hard to know for example if the layer is empty because if the layer is empty it doesn't have any topology there it doesn't have any geometry there it should really go and become like gray so i'll be not, i'll know that it's empty uh, and i'll know that it's kind of group and groups really should be the groups they shouldn't be layers because it's really hard to read. And sometimes it's really annoying if I click on a little bolt and it will actually unscroll me the whole thing, uh, the whole that groove, and I then I have to scroll up again. I wish if I pressed A, it would only point me at the group of the bolts. And then if I press double A, it would actually unscroll the whole group because that would make my life much easier. 
if I could color code my groups uh, inside 3D code, then I would be really easy to navigate among my groups. I will know that, okay, maybe red belongs to the wheels, green belongs to the bolts or my vehicle. Another thing I wish even in Photoshop had that if you had columns of different layers. So if I have a huge project, then I could just make a triple column layout, maybe even put it on my second screen and just go through all each one of the column, each one of the group and see where the parts are. Obviously we have my really easy outliner, uh, I can group the stuff, go inside, you know, we really don't have to invent the wheel about the grouping. You know, the first time I tried to input an OBJ into the scene, I thought it was a joke because I just couldn't figure out how, why is it so hard. It's just just impossible, it's just, just crazy hard. So if I go input an object and pick some, okay, I have this and uh, bring it here. So I think it's pretty big, so I'll just uh, zoom out. And, you know, you see this gray thing and it's not actually being inputted. You have to apply it. You have all these options here that you need to go through, uh, that you need to do uh, to apply it. Sometimes uh, you have to also click so it doesn't get voxelized. And to be honest, this is a completely useless option because just I just need to drag and drop into the scene that it will get automatically rid of the space, uh, auto, auto scale, whatever. Uh, and no voxelization. I just need it to be a surface object. Uh, just uh, like everywhere else, it's pretty easy to do that. Every time I think about I have to input something into 3D code scene, I cringe because it's so not straightforward. Because then you have to click apply. And then you have this window that I don't really care about because I just input it for reference. Why do I have to even read this? Uh, Produce dimensions, whatever. I, I, sometimes on one day I click yes, another day I click no. Sometimes yes, no, because it doesn't matter. Can I have a, a little box here like to never ever show this uh, message to me again? And then it created a layer that's a sub layer of that volume, which also why why is it a sub layer? Uh, and uh, it's always. Then we still have this window which still has the input window right here activated. Why do I have it still here? I just want to drag and drop the object and just forget about it. There is no rectangular selection in the sculpt room and it's a huge problem because I have to click A, Shift A, pick the objects and it's kind of almost ridiculous like here uh, in this uh, big assembly. This is one a small one, but it's kind of really indicative of all the issues that I find in 3D code. It's overly complex, uh, a lot of menus on top of menus that don't really need to be there. So say uh, I want to do a smooth all, which I have on a hotkey, and it offers me a smoothing degree. It used to be that I would just want, uh, I would just press F12 and smooth it. And if I needed to smooth it three times, I would press F12 three times because it's actually really fast. But now I have to press enter, F12, enter, F12, enter, F12, enter. I don't know how many times I need to smooth the object because some Sometimes I need to smooth it twice, sometimes I need to smooth it uh, four times. Because if I input a number, then it's always smoothed, then okay, I have to undo it and just uh, do a s incremental smoothing. So again, for some people it might be really beneficial, but for me, I just want an uh, option box here that to never show this box ever again, and I just want to run s smooth all like it used to be. Just one click and get it done. Come on, guys, uh, we want to really limit the clicks here uh, for all the operations, for everything to go smoothly and fast. Another feature that could be great is the voice command uh, feature. Uh, it's more of a request. It doesn't, it's not present here. It's usually not present in any other software. But if we could say some rare commands, like say a retop room, and it will jump to retop room. Then you say render, and it will jump into the render. Then you say uh, like rapid smooth, and then the brush will be activated, right? So that could be pretty cool because a lot of these commands, they you know they have good names. They can say them out and to say a walks layer, and that will activate it here because sometimes maybe you do them once a week but you know that there's somewhere they didn't palette and they know how they're called so you can just tell it and it will uh, uh, be here so it's more of a request and thank you all for watching and again please leave a comment in this comment section and tell about your experience uh, what you want to request specifically about the interface because usually some of those things are really quite easy to modify and improve they're not like big big feature requests you know like i ask for color coding of delays I, I'm not a developer, but I don't think it is a hard core issue. I think it's pretty easy to add color coding for the layer. So let's see if, if this is going to be changed. I'll make sure that 3D Core developers will see this video and see you in the next uh, upload.